technology mediates the way we perceive reality. It not only connects people and their environment, but also actively shapes us. It's so invisible and nuanced that it tries to hide its mediating presence and instead mask itself as the actual experience of the world. And we become unconscious and unaware of it. Today, as an artist and engineer exploring various technologies for the future, I'd like to provide some new ways of thinking about this and hope we can all become more aware of this mediation. First, some context. In the 80s, media think tank adbusters criticized how public space is being colonized by commercial ads. In particular, they were criticizing the content of the ad, not the placement or the medium of the ads. Today, in the new digital media world, the rules have changed. The content no longer matters that much, but the placement, the construction of the content, and who is looking at the content is now matters the most. And to be clear, this is not just about commerce, it also has political and interpersonal implications. In 1964, philosopher Marshall McLuhan stated, the medium is the message. 55 years later, the medium is the message is almost literal now. Unfortunately, many people do not understand the nuance, the ways that we will be advertised to, and that our perception itself has been turned into a form of consumption. So this is what I call examined vision, a technique to analyze our own visual perceptions. And today we'll talk about social media, targeted ads, and online searches. So I started this art project by creating a series of perceptual machines that each gives a feeling of an amplified and purified experience of how it feels like to be in this online world. For example, nowadays many of us have this allergic reaction to ideas that are different from ours. We may not even realize that we've developed this mental allergy. So I made this headset that creates an artificial allergy to the color red. It simulates this hypersensitivity by making red things look bigger when you are wearing it. It has two modes, nocebo and placebo. <laughs> In nocebo mode, it generates this sensorial experience of hyperallergy. Whenever you see red, the red expands. It's similar to social media's amplification effect. Like when you look into something that bothers you, you, you tend to stick with like-minded people and you exchange messages and memes and you become even more angry. Sometimes a trivial discussion gets amplified and blown way out of proportion. And maybe that's even why we are living in the politics of anger. In placebo mode, it's an artificial cure for this allergy. Whenever you see red, the red shrinks. It's a palliative. Like in digital media, when you find somebody that has different opinions with you, you can unfollow them, remove them completely out of your feet. It cures this allergy by avoiding it, but this way of intentionally ignoring opposing ideas makes human communities hyper-fragmented and separated. What if we take a look at the last American presidential election map <laughs> with this red allergy? See how this allergy like mediate our perceptions. This allergy creates a rise of violent online extremism, even mass shootings, simply by amplifying the segregation of the like-minded. Our perception is not only part of our identities, but in digital media, it's also part of the value chain. Our visual field is bombarded with so much information that our perception itself has become a commodity that has real estate value. So the second machine is a commoditized vision. It measures how each of our clicks and views can be and are being monetized in this particular social economic context. So this is what's happening. When you look at ads, you earn money, but your eyes turn red. When you look at things without ads, you spend the money you earned, but your eyes are refreshed.
you have to manage the time between looking at what you want to see and what makes money. Everyday activity becomes hampered because you have to turn vision into a money-making enterprise. And more efficient viewer becomes more efficient labor. Perception is our currency. We are giving it out for free. The last machine is about tactile vision. It gives the wearer to be more conscious of how we navigate the internet naturally narrows our world view. So when surfing the internet, there are two modes of being there. One is wandering, which happens a lot at the beginning of the internet. One can easily get lost in the vast landscape of information. As medium become more efficient, it gives us the tool, searching, to limit this wandering. So we become more focused and targeted. Obsessively searching online is like looking into a pinhole where we build up everything without an overview. So this machine is the extreme version of the online searching behavior. So here, when the light is far away, this mask breathes slowly. And when the light gets closer, it breathes rapidly. So we can navigate through space with this tactile vision. The anglerfish lives in the life light bottom of the sea. They have a piece of dorsal spine tipped with luminous flesh to lure the prey close enough to devour them. And similar to the predation behavior of the anglerfish, the light here is a cue, a lure, for others to find us in total darkness, like a dating app for cave animals. <laughs> light, the single signal here, is both the communication channel and the trap. When you are only looking for one thing, similar to searching, you lose the capacity to see things in context to make more informed decisions. So these three experiences provide a tangible expression to how technology mediates our perception. When our everyday clicks and views become habitual, it becomes unconsciously automatic. And if all the complex lives of many people become unconsciously, then such lives are as if they have never been. By differentizing and exposing our habitual perceptions, I hope these experiments help us to think about this technological mediation. So, well, even though we can't wear the helmets every day, it gives us a lens to see alternative possibilities and wonder what we could do with it. Here are some opportunities. For government, there could be some top-down regulations outside from the industry that decouple the manipulation of human perception from business success. For creators, if we can diversify the business model to support society's well-being, rather than simply maximizing corporate profit, we could switch from this perception economy to be more sustainable and beneficial to both individuals and the society. Give people more control and engage consumers in an honest conversation of this value exchange. And lastly, for individuals, keep yourself aware and make yourself curious and observant and have a sense of wonder. Know your own intention and use your voice to remind the world. Even though technology is creating these isolations, we could use it to make the world connected again by breaking the existing model and go beyond it. By exploring how we interface with these technologies, we could step out of this mindless consumption and almost machine-like behavior. Let human shape technology, not the other way around. Thank you. <laughs>